Uh, this uh, device is called an electrophorus. Uh, that name was coined by Mr. Volta many years ago. And what it consists of some very simple equipment. You have a styrofoam plate, and you rub the styrofoam plate with something, such as a wool sock, that works great. And then it also consists of an aluminum plate with a foam cup. You set the aluminum plate on the foam cup, bring your finger near the aluminum plate, and listen real carefully. You may have heard a spark. And then you lift the aluminum plate up by holding on the foam cup, and then you bring your finger close again, and you can repeat the process multiple times. And notice how the aluminum plate pulled up the foam plate when I did not hold the foam plate down. That shows us that the electrostatic force was greater than the force of gravity. So I need to hold the foam plate down. And I can just keep repeating this multiple times. So actually, I had the students do this. Now, to see a little better what's going on, it is useful to take a drinking straw that has a thread attached and at the end of the thread is a tiny piece of a straw that has been covered with aluminum foil. It can be attached using glue or using two-sided tape. Now we stick this in the styrofoam cup. The cup has two holes in it and we can stick this right in here. And then this little piece of straw will serve with aluminum foil. The little piece of straw with aluminum foil will serve as a conductor. And we will want the string to be hanging straight down with the middle of the conductor against the edge of the aluminum plate. And then as I lift up the plate, the conductor will swing away from the plate. As I set it back down, it will go back to the plate again. If I lift the plate and then touch the plate, the conductor comes back to the plate. If I set it down, uh, the conductor swings out now. And if I touch the plate, it'll hit the plate again. And I can keep repeating that process. Now, if I have the prop, this conductor on my side, then I can lift the plate, touch it, Conductor goes against the plate, set it back down, and it swings out. Now, if I very carefully bring my finger close to this conductor, it will be attracted to my finger. Look at it being attracted to my finger there, if I bring it real close. And when it hits my finger, it loses its charge, and it falls back against the plate, gets more charge, and then comes back against my finger. And so as the conductor swings back and forth between the plate and my finger, it is conducting electrons uh, from the plate to my finger until it eventually conducts all the electrons away that want to leave the plate. And so I can lift it up, and I can repeat the process up here, except this conductor is acting in a very rambunctious manner at the moment. So I'll touch the plate put it back against the plate and lower it. And so it's swinging out. So I can again repeat that process many times. And this can be used to teach about the concept of voltage and current and resistance. As the charge leaves the plate, the voltage on the plate decreases and the electrons are no longer able to transfer across the gap to my finger because the resistance is too high. I can decrease the resistance by bringing my finger closer to this thing and then the current will flow again as electrons flow to my finger. And then I can bring it all the way in until all the electrons are off. Now I'm going to set this up again. Uh, this time, I will bring a needle next to this conductor. I will aim it at the conductor, and if you watch very carefully, as I bring it close to the conductor, it is 
falls away from the needle before the needle ever gets to it, the electrical charge gets induced on the needle, since the plate has a negative charge, a positive charge gets induced on the needle, nearby air molecules uh, lose their electrons to the point of the needle, and those positively charged air molecules now head towards this little conductor, and they actually conduct the electricity through the air uh, without the need of the needle to actually touching the conductor, and so the conductor uh, hits against the plate, and then it also it vibrates enough to vibrate against the needle as well. And so this experiment can be done with very simple equipment. Now if you have access to an electronic store, uh, you can get a neon lamp, just a small neon bulb. This is called an NE2H. And this neon bulb can be brought against this conductor and you may observe the neon bulb flashing as the conductor vibrates between the neon bulb and the plate there is a flash as electrons are transferred through the neon bulb I'll do that on the other side here I will go ahead and raise the plate and this time I will bring the neon bulb against the plate and the neon bulb will flash, and then I can lower the plate. The neon bulb, as it's brought against here, will now flash again. Now this neon bulb has two tiny electrodes in it, and the negative electrode is the one that flashes. If you watch the neon bulb very carefully, when the plate is raised, the electrode next to my hand is the one that flashes. Uh, when the plate is lowered, the electrode next to the plate is the one that flashes and that shows us that when the plate is lowered the electrons are leaving the plate and going to my hand but when the plate is raised the electrons leave my hand and go to the plate so this process can continue on indefinitely because the styrofoam plate does not lose very many electrons at all to the aluminum plate instead the negative charge in the styrofoam plate repels the electrons from the negative plate so that they go into my hand and so the, the plate had now has lost electrons because of the influence of the styrofoam plate. When I lift this plate above the styrofoam plate so it's no longer under its influence, the electrons on this aluminum plate reposition themselves and the electrons now jump from my hand to the plate because the plate had developed an overall positive charge.